is a view of a canal. In this video, you will see that the water level of this water body gradually decreases or falls down. And soon you will see that the floor of the water body will become visible. See, the floor of the water body has no water at this time. And again, you will see that the water level will become visible or it will gradually rise up. See, water level is gradually rising. Yes. So, if we, here we can find that there is an alternate rise and fall of the water body. Now, what is this phenomenon called? It is very interesting, isn't it? Now, let's find out what is this called. So, today we will study about this interesting phenomena. This interesting phenomena that is the alternate rise and fall of any water body like sea, canal, stream, rivers, etc. is called a tide. So, tide refers to the alternate rise in water level and fall in water level. Now, we will find out the reason or the cause behind this ebb and flow of water body. In our previous slide, we studied that the alternate rise and fall of water level is called a tide. Now, we will discover the factor what causes tide. So, tides are actually caused due to the moon's gravitational pull. Let's understand how. We know that the moon revolves or orbits around the earth. Now, earth's surface is covered by water bodies and water is a fluid thing. So, it gets attracted by the moon's gravitational pull. Here in this video, you see that as the moon revolves around earth, it has an impact on the water bodies present on the surface of the earth. Therefore, the moon pulls the water bodies present on the earth's surface. Actually, the gravitational pull of the moon attracts the water bodies present on the earth's surface. So, tides are caused due to gravitational pull of the moon. So, in our previous slide, we saw that how moon's gravitational pull attracts the water bodies present on the earth's surface. So, now the portion of the earth that faces the moon, see this portion, that is point A, experience a massive rise in the water level. That is the water bodies located at point A, this is known as high tide. So, high tide refers to the greatest elevation of the water level. And here it takes place at point A, the portion that directly faces the moon. Now you can see that the moon is actually not pulling the water surface with a rope. Then what is causing this portion of the earth's surface to bulge out? There must be a force, right? This is not just the moon's gravitational force, but there is much into it. Now let's discover the other reason. Imagine a ride on the roller coaster. It is very thrilling, isn't it? What happens is that once you go up and in the another second you just flip upside down and then you turn again. But have you ever imagined that the roller coaster or the people sitting on the coaster never falls off or the coaster never goes off the track? Now why is that so? There must be a reason behind this, isn't it? Let's look at it. The factor that keeps the roller coaster on track is the centripetal force. Now what is centripetal force? Centripetal force is a center seeking force. This means that when a body moves along a curved path, every point on the circle is actually directed towards its center. So this force drags any object on the periphery of the circle towards its center. So now take the case of the roller coaster. See, if you are here, then the centripetal force will actually drag you towards its center. Again, if you are here, the centripetal force will again drag you towards its center. 
so it is the centripetal force that does not allow the roller coaster to to deviate from its track when it travels through a loop so due to this centripetal force the roller coaster is actually on track now the centripetal force also has an impact on the water bodies present on the earth surface when the moon revolves around the earth we will see how so in our previous slide we learned that centripetal force is a center seeking force that pulls an object towards a center of the rotating body now take this example of earth and moon you know the moon revolves around the earth now the portion of the earth that faces moon there the water bodies present at point a are attracted by the moon's gravitational pull and they bulge out but centripetal force also has a role to play what happens is that due to centripetal force every point that faces the moon is attracted towards the moon's center why is that so because the moon is also revolving and earth is also rotating so the water bodies are not static that is they are not in a fixed position but they are revolving they are moving so they are traveling along a circular path and we have learned that when an object is on a circular path the object is influenced by a force an inward force which pulls the object towards its center so when moon also revolves the water bodies present on the earth surface are directed towards the moon center and therefore this portion of the earth bulges out so here we find a high tide at point a so at point a high tide is experienced due to centripetal force caused by moon's gravity that is the centripetal force attracts the water bodies towards moon's center so the gravitational pull and the centripetal force together causes this portion of the earth to bulge out now in this picture you can see that this portion of the earth is also bulged out but this portion is far away from the moon so moon's gravitational pull will be least effective here but still it is bulged out so there must be another reason that is causing this portion to bulge out now let's look at the reason so before we find out that logic can you help me to answer this question what is the main reason for the occurrence of tides is it the rotation of the earth revolution of the earth gravitational pull of the moon or winds well the correct answer is gravitational pull of the moon we just studied that it is the gravitational pull of the moon that attracts the water bodies present on the earth surface so that surface of the earth bulges out so the correct answer is gravitational pull of the moon so now we will find out the other reason that is causing the other portion of the earth to bulge out well this is a scene from the amusement park see one of the kid is falling off the merry go round but why does the kid fall out of the merry go round and why not into the circle well we will discover this reason the boy in the previous video fell out of the merry go round and not into it because of the centrifugal force now centrifugal force is a type of force which causes a body to move away from the center of the rotating body so if this merry go round is rotating and if you are on this right then at every point on this right a force is acting on you that will throw you out of the merry go round so at every point you will be thrown away from the center of this merry go round so the force that causes a body to radiate away or to divert from the center of the rotating body is the centrifugal force 
this same force also has an impact on the water bodies when the earth rotates on its axis we will see how now we know that the earth rotates on its axis so when the earth rotates on its axis the water bodies present on the earth surface they deviate from the earth center and the force that causes them to deviate from the earth center is the centrifugal force so here at point b the gravitational pull of the moon is least effective why so because point b is far away from the moon and therefore here gravitational pull of the moon is least effective so what is causing this portion to bulge out is the centrifugal force centrifugal force causes this portion of the earth to bulge out because the water bodies deviate away from the center of the earth as it rotates on its axis so at point b we can observe another high tide which is caused due to centrifugal force and centrifugal force is caused by earth's rotation so as earth rotates on its axis the water bodies deviate away from the earth's center and therefore we can experience another high tide just opposite to point a so point a is experiencing high tide because of moon's gravitational pull while point b is experiencing another high tide because of the centrifugal force caused by earth's rotation so point b is experiencing another high tide because of centrifugal force caused by earth's rotation now look at this flattened part well now let's look at it what do the flattened portions represent these flattened portions represent low tide what is low tide low tide is the lowest level of a water body now why do we have low tide at point c and d that is at these two points well we have low tide at these two points because most of the water bodies has already accumulated at point a and b because of two forces acting on them clearly speaking at point a we have high tide due to moon's gravitational pull while at point b we have another high tide because of the centrifugal force caused by earth's rotation so most of the water bodies have already accumulated there so at point c and d the remaining water accumulates and we find the water bodies have low level so the lowest level of the water body is called the low tide and here it is experienced at point c and point d so we have learned about high tide and low tide high tide is the greatest elevation of the water level and low tide is the lowest level of a water body and we have also discovered the reasons that leads to the formation of high tide and low tide we already know what is a high tide and what is a low tide now the difference between the height of a high tide and the height of a low tide is called the tidal range so now look at this diagram carefully this highest level of the water body is called high tide whereas this lowest level of the water body is called low tide and the difference between them see this height this difference between the highest level and the lowest level is called tidal range so tidal range refers to the height difference between high tide and low tide now this tidal range is not uniform throughout the world it varies from water bodies to water bodies that is the tidal range is only half a meter in deep water bodies like oceans whereas the tidal range is 10 to 12 meter in shallow water bodies like marginal seas or estuaries so here we understood what is tidal range called so tidal range refers to the difference between the height of high tide and the height of a low tide 
and we also learned that this tidal range is not uniform throughout the globe. In this video, we understood what are tides and the causes that leads to the formation of tides. The main reason for the formation of tide is the moon's gravitational pull. We also learned about the two types of tides, high tide and low tide. And we also learned that the difference between the height of a high tide and a low tide is called a tidal range. In our next video, we will learn about spring tide and neap tide and the importance of tides. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now